Hey all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this video, we're going to be doing an early game guide for the Gravesite that does a lot of bleed, a lot of physical damage too. This is a pretty awesome one. I had an absolute blast. I had really fun with this one, and I cannot wait to get into the details here. We're going to go over everything that you need to get a powerful early game build. And this is going to get you very, very powerful in just one to two hours of your own time. This doesn't involve warping or any crazy things like going to late game areas and then coming back or anything like that. This is for new players and those that just want a fun build. All around, it turned out great. And we're going to jump right in at part one. We're going to pick the Samurai class because that's going to help us for two reasons. One, we're going to get a bleed weapon, which will help us with a farm later on. And the other reason is dexterity. You usually need a minimum of 12 to 15 dex anyway for most builds. For your keepsake, by the way, make sure that you pick the Golden Seed. You're going to want the Golden Seed as the keepsake for me. I just used testing on this character, changed a couple of things, but I didn't go too crazy. You can customize your characters all you want, but as far as the keepsake, the Golden Seed, at least for me, is the best one because it means an extra flask. And then after you get through the graveyard and get killed, most likely get killed by the Grafted Scion, you're going to end up where I am right here at part two, where we're going to be heading to gate front where we can start picking up the maps and moving forward. Now for this next part and some of the longer parts, just follow me on screen. I'm going to end up catching up at the next step because some of them are pretty much follow me on horseback. Grab everything I grab. I'm going to be grabbing the crafting kit on the way and we're going to meet up at gate front. Make sure you grab the crafting kit here that's going to help you a lot for later on. We're not going to use that for the purpose of this video, but make sure you grab it. It's definitely useful to have for later. All right, and now we're at Gatefront. At Gatefront, we are going to equip the Spectral Steed after you talk to Melina, and then we're going to move on to grab the map, and then we're going to start heading or making our way towards Agil Lake. We're going to need to head down there because there's an invader in our way. We want to see patches first. That's going to help us a lot because we're going to grab some gold pickled foul foot, and that's going to end up giving us more runes in the end.
Okay, so when this invader attacks, all you have to do is hit this invader just one time, one individual time, and that will add a summon who will come in and help you with the fight. Be careful for Bloodblade, as it can do a lot of damage and bleed build up to yourself, and make sure you take him down with the help of Yura. Then you're going to go into the cave. I'm not going to handhold for the smaller parts because these are easier to figure out. The cave is incredibly small. Get into the room that's the boss room. Make sure you grab the item and then Patches is going to attack. Follow my strategy on screen and we're going to make him surrender. The option will eventually come up to allow Patches to surrender, and after he surrenders and you're done with all the dialogue, we're going to end up reloading the area for the next part so he opens up as a merchant. Once Patches becomes available as a merchant, it makes our life a little bit easier because we can grab the gold pickle foul foot we want from him. By the way, keep in mind here, I sold a couple things so I can grab all three, that he has Margit Shackle because later on we're going to be coming back for this item. It stuns the first boss. Then we're going to take the transporter trap. When we take this transporter trap, it's going to end up putting us at the other map in Limgrave, which is really convenient. Follow me on screen. Eventually, we're going to be moving up and heading north towards a church. And since we have both maps, I can show you where to go now. We're going to head right there. That is the third church of America. We're going to head in that direction, and we can grab our wondrous physic and a sight of grace and head towards Kaled after. Make sure you grab everything I'm showing you on screen because there is a sacred tier here which is going to allow you to upgrade your flash. You're going to get the Wondrix physics. You want that too. And after this church, we're going to be heading up and moving towards Kaled. There are spirit springs at the back of the church. You can use these to fly up in the air, and uh, you only actually need two of them. The second one can bring you all the way to the top, and once you get to the top, you'll see the red area, the direction that we're going to be heading in, which is Kaled. There is an invader up here, so stay to the right if you don't want to get invaded by Anastasia. And keep moving forward, we're going to grab the Rotview Balcony, Sight of Grace. Next up, to the right of Rotview Balcony, we don't have the maps yet, but you can't miss it. There's a fort. You can see it from a mile away. You're going to head towards that fort, grab the Sight of Grace, and you're going to end up going around the entire fort because we're going to need the buff, Flame Grant Me Strength. Make your best effort to get out of there alive. It took me two tries. I ended up getting killed the first time. I think that was my first death. And you're going to move out of here. And the next step, we're going to be heading from Rotview Balcony to Dragon Barrow.
make sure to grab the Site of Grace on the way. And another thing is, up here, there's also going to be a map for Dragon Barrel. You're going to want that, too. You want to pick up all the maps in the game. It's very convenient to have them, and it makes it easier to follow along. You're going to go behind this dragon and you're going to grab this Site of Grace. Now this is important. If you haven't rested yet in Kaled, rest now in Kaled so you can be taken back to the round table hold as the animation can end up stopping you from cheesing this dragon. Now this is important. When the dying animation starts, and you can do the last hit on horseback if that helps you, you're going to need to book it back to that Site of Grace and rest at that Site of Grace before the dying animation completes. Now on the levels, follow me exactly on screen as far as the levels go, and then we're going to end up using the dragon a second time. I only ended up doing it twice. There's going to be a second set of levels too. You can follow those also, and we want to make sure we have a little runes left over so we can grab Market Shackle too. And about 33 minutes into this video, I think we're 33 minutes in, we are at level 38. We have some extra runes too because the next step that we're going to be moving on to here is we're going to go back to patches to grab Margaret Shackle. And then back to the round table hold so we can end up grabbing a seal and a couple other things. We're going to need a dagger too because eventually we're going to put the Golden Vow Ash of War on that. And the next part is back to Gatefront. Now that we're back at Gatefront, we have some goals in mind. There's a couple more things that we're going to need to grab. We're going to need to keep moving forward. But the next thing that I want to grab is going to end up being the Gravesite because that's the weapon we're going to use for this video and we need to get to that farm. Make sure you grab everything at Stormhill Shack, including the Stone Sword Key, because that's going to be useful for us later, and you can also grab a summon here as well.
Then instead of going to Stormville Castle, we're going to move around the castle entirely because we want to get to a nice farm spot that's right by a site of grace where we can fight two of the enemies that have the grave scythe and we can easily farm them. And once we get around here, we're going to grab this side of grace. And then you're going to see a church nearby. That church nearby, right behind it, there's a graveyard. You can see it right ahead. It's what we're staring at at north in the video. And this is the strategy for farming this. For me, it took eight tries in total. But the first thing for me was trying to figure out a strategy for it. First thing is to take out the first one, dodge his attacks once or twice, lure the big guy away. After you take him out, you can then go after the second gravesite enemy. This can be a little difficult and to farm, especially at base level, because I didn't want to waste any smithing stones right on the katana. And Anshi is super helpful here, but that being said, it can take a little bit to get used to, so just have patience and you will come up with a strategy for taking these guys down. As I mentioned, it took me eight tries in total. We are at part 16. We ended up grabbing the Grave Scythe, and once we have our weapon, we've got one of the most powerful strength weapons in the early game because it has near colossal AR, and it's a fantastic weapon for the weight. Now we're going to go back to the main site of grace at the lakes, the first site of grace we got to, and then you're going to follow me on screen. This is going to be a little bit of a long part, but we're going to head through the lakes. We're going to end up grabbing two maps, and we're going to move towards getting Blood Flame Blade, which will buff us and allow us to get more bleed. Make sure to buy the smithing stones from this vendor here. It's very helpful. And also grab the lantern because that's going to help us later too.
Also, be sure to grab the Sites of Grace along the way because eventually you're going to come back to the lakes. At the end of this video, we're going to be going back to Stormville, but this will help you once you return to the lakes and make things a little bit easier. Make sure you grab the second map. You can easily follow me along. I know this part's a little bit longer because you're following me on horseback, but grab the Sight of Grace, grab the second map, and we're going to move towards Blood Flame Blade. After you grab this specific site of grace, which I think is fallen ruins or something like that, there's going to be a church nearby. We're going to head towards that church, and then in the next clip, at the end of the next clip, I'll show on the map exactly where Blood Flame Blade is. Alright, now that you have all the maps, we're going to grab Blood Flame Blade. After we destroy this Teardrop Scarab that you're going to have to find, I will show you exactly on the map where he is. He's not too hard to take out, and he will end up dropping Blood Flame Blade. Next thing we want to grab is the best available talisman for us, and that is the Wing Sword Insignia. It's going to be at Stillwater Cave right there. You can check it out on the map. Go right to that cave, inside that cave, and then you can follow me here. Make sure to equip your lantern and have that ready so that we can see in the cave it's relatively dark. That's going to help us a lot here. Some of the enemies here can be difficult, and you may get poisoned in the process, but lucky for us, our katana is a poise-breaking machine, and this boss can be a little bit difficult, but if you use the Ash of War primarily that's stock on the katana, you'll end up running through this fight. Probably might take you a couple tries at most.
and posture break them as much as you possibly can. You can probably avoid the poison. You can also use boluses to uh, cure poison as well. I don't know if I had any on me, but that being said, we're able to get the wing sword insignia, which is an awesome talisman for this build. It's going to make us a lot stronger. Next step here is if you want the sage set, which by the way was in the thumbnail, follow me on screen and we can grab this too. And it's actually a better set for mages and whatnot, but it does look cool with the grave scythe. And now we're going to be going back to Limgrave. After I take out this enemy, I'll show you exactly on the map where we are. And we're going to be grabbing the Golden Vow Ash of War because that'll add 10% defense and attack for us for around 40 or 45 seconds, which is extremely helpful. And this is where to get smithing stone ones. Now, I'm not going to walk through the entire cave. It's relatively simple, but there's smithing stone ones on the walls here. And it's also dropped by the regular enemies in the game, the miners too. So you want to make sure that you have 12 smithing stones in total because we're going to need them. And now back to the round table hold. We should be able to, if you bought those smithing stones, by the way, you should at this point be able to get the grave site to plus four. Then put the Golden Vow Ash of War on the dagger that you have and make sure you have that equipped so you can switch to it and buff yourself before fights. If you keep going north towards Stormville Castle, you can't miss this castle past uh, Stormhill Shack. You're going to end up running into Market, the first boss is where we're at now. And we use the Golden Vow Ash of War, Flame Grant Me Strength, Blood Flame Blade, and then we filled up our FP for the buffing order. And the first boss at Stormville Castle to get entry is going to be Margit, and we're going to take on him with Spinning Slash, because Spinning Weapon is going to be something that we're going to be grabbing in Stormville Castle itself. Spinning Slash is still good. It's no slouch by any means. It does posture damage too, which is a huge bonus. You should be able to get through this fight fairly easily, but if you're a person that uses summons, I didn't use summons for the purpose of this video, you can go back to the first church and you can get the Spirit Calling Bell. That being said, you can also summon Rozier for this fight, although he usually dies, I think, like halfway or, I don't know, three quarters through. He doesn't have a lot of HP, but he does do decent damage, so that can help as well. You can also use Rozier and a summon like the Jellyfish if you feel like it too, making the fight much, much easier. Now I'm going to leave exploring Stormvale to yourself because honestly it's a fantastic dungeon, one of the best dungeons in the game. You should really have that, especially if you're a new player, explore it for the first time. But from the Rampart Tower site of Grace, eventually you're going to run past the Eagles, there'll be a hole in the ceiling, drop down, you'll find Rozier. He's got an amazing Ash of War that we're going to grab in Spinning Weapons, so we're going to grab that Ash of War. You can buy the other two if you want to as well. Make sure that you grab Spinning Weapons specifically because it makes this build even better. Next up again from the Rampart Tower site of Grace, eventually you're going to loop around and there's going to be an elevator available. After you get this elevator activated, you're going to go down this elevator, there's a grafted scion down here, or you can get to this room any other way. There's, I think, one or two other ways to get here. You're going to follow me on screen to grab the wet blade. Remember that stone sword key we grabbed? Well, it's great we grabbed that stone sword key because that's going to help us here. We need it for the door. Make sure you take on these two enemies. They're relatively tough. And then once you beat them, you can grab the wet blade or just grab it and run if that's up to you. But we're going to use spinning weapon here, which is incredible, by the way. Take these guys out and then get that wet blade so we can go for heavy attack.
Now we're going to go back to the round table hold because we're going to have to see the smither here again. And we're going to use spinning weapon and we're going to put it in heavy affinity now that we have the wet blade for it. And this actually scales really well in heavy affinity as you move throughout the game. It's a great weapon for heavy affinity. So you're definitely going to want that. Now I'm going to leave you to explore, as I mentioned, Stormville yourself, because it's an incredible dungeon. It's probably one of the best, if not the best dungeon in the game, in my opinion. It truly is incredible. It kind of reminds me of the Dark Souls days. But anyways, we're going to take on Godric here. I do get a little bit greedy, but this, this build ends up doing incredible damage. There's also a room before Godric if you're struggling where you can meet Nefeli and then you can use her to summon for the fight and you can also use your own summons as well as I mentioned earlier if you go back to that first church that you see where the original merchant is you can grab um, speak to Ronnie and grab the spirit calling bell. And if it's not available there and you find yourself needing it it'll be then back at the round table hold sold by the twin maids. After I phase God, Rick, I end up getting even more greedy, which was probably going to end up well, close to my downfall here, but we do end up beating him in just one try in the end, but either way, he does end up grabbing me here, which is really rare. I, I rarely ever get grabbed by God, Rick, but yeah, some bad luck here and a little bit of greed. That being said, though, the build does a lot of damage. My recommendation here is to definitely be more patient than I was. I, I think I ran out of stamina there or I just forgot to roll. Either way, he ended up grabbing me, although it doesn't end up defeating me. In the end here, he's only going to end up being one or two hits anyway. But yeah, definitely don't get as greedy in this fight as I did. By the way, I wanted to mention too, if this guide was super helpful for you, or if you had a lot of fun with this build, or if you follow my videos normally, definitely be sure to subscribe. I'm going to be covering a lot of Elden Ring content up until DLC, and then throughout DLC as well, and even after. Yeah, this is pretty much my favorite game of all time. In a second here, we're going to go over the finalized build and everything that we did at this point, and show everything that we got all the way up to this point in time. And we're about an hour and a half through the game, and it took around 20-25 minutes to farm the gravesite, so not too bad there. And here are the finalized levels. We're going to get to, I think, level 41, around level 41, which isn't too bad, about an hour and a half or so into the game. And that's what you can do with the levels there. Keep investing in strength and vigor. And for the build here, we have the Grave Scythe and Heavy Affinity with Spinning Weapon. We have the Golden Vow, Ash of War on the Dagger, any seal for buffs. We're using the Page Set. We have the Wing Sword Insignia. And then I wasn't really using the Tear, and we had Market Shackle and the Lantern. And for our stats, we have 20 Vigor, 14 Mind, 15 Endurance, 22 Strength, which goes to, I believe, around 33 with the 1.5 times bonus when you two-hand, 15 Dexterity, 15 Faith, 10 Arcane, Flame Grant with Strength, and Blood Flame Blade. Thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoy the early game overpowered Grave Scythe Guide, which ended up doing more damage than I than I expected. Honestly, it ended up being a fantastic build in the end. I even went took a Gheel down, and I didn't end up throwing that clip in because it ended up long enough, but he went down literally under a minute, which was pretty incredible in the early game. Definitely a quick way to proc bleed. Try this one out, and it's also a really fun build as well. Be sure to sub if you're not subbed yet, and I will catch everybody back at my channel. See you guys soon.